Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the conversation series. I am so excited today because I have Kat McDaniel with us today, and she is a small business and local business owner here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I am going to let her introduce herself. Hi, everybody. My name is Kat. Um, I am not, well, I'm local to Raleigh now, but I'm originally from Northern Virginia. Um, I met my husband living in Wilmington, North Carolina, and he is from the Raleigh area. So we moved here uh, about six months before the pandemic. Um, I've worked in restaurants for a very long time and found myself unemployed when the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of pregnant friends who were asking me to like do something for their nursery because I've always been a crafty, creative person. Um, I did a lot of embroidery uh, in the past, and then I made myself a macrame wall hanging for our backdrop for my wedding. And so I had a couple of pregnant friends that were like, oh, you do that. Do you think you could do one for my nursery? And I was like, yeah, for sure. And then it was the pandemic and everybody was like seeing my stuff on Instagram. And I had a lot of friends push me into like, you should do this, like sell these, like not just do it for your friends. Yeah. So it was a blessing that I was able to take a lot of time and energy into creating my small business. And then that's when Bella Ruth Co. was born. Um, that is my business name is Bella Ruth Co. My name is not Bella or Ruth, it is Kat. Um, but my grandmothers are Muriel Isabella and Marjorie Ruth. Okay. So I named my business after them. Very and yeah, so I, I got really heavily into it during like the... Like I'd say May to August is when I really got things going. And then there were markets started happening again. And I was able to get myself into a bunch of markets through Triangle Pop-Up, which is local here to Raleigh. And then I got approached by a few um, businesses to put my things in their store, which was huge and amazing and never really thought I would get there. You yeah. know, I, I still feel like I have some imposter syndrome every once in a while. Like, is this really like, yeah. you really want my stuff in your store? Okay, cool. So yeah, basically that's, that's the story behind Bella Ruth Co. Very cool. And I, that, that name is so unique. I was going to ask you how you came to that, but that is yeah. a really, really cool story behind it. Thank you. Um, can you give me a, like, I I've seen your products. Can you give us a rundown just of everything that you sell? Yeah. Okay. So in this room, there's a couple things that I have. So this right here is a wall hanging planter. Um, I started making those in like just a natural color and then you could pick like what color you wanted the bottom wrapped and that those fit like a four inch pot, um, okay. with a plant in it. And then my mother-in-law one day was like, no, you need to do like, what about those people that come up to you? And they're like, I don't have a green thumb. Like I can't keep a plant alive. Like those are so cute, but I would never be able to do that. Right. So then we started the Mason jars with like fresh flowers in them or eucalyptus. So like everyone can have like fresh yeah. greenery, like all over their home. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a plant that you keep right. alive. Um, and then I also make some larger pot um, plant hangers. And then what really started all of this was I made a four foot wide um, backdrop for my wedding. And then I made one that's about two and a half feet wide for a nursery. So I make like large wall hangings, smaller wall hangings. I even have like accessories. Like I make keychains, um, earrings. I just started doing, because of all of the pregnant friends, I just started doing um, macrame pacifier clips and like teething rings, yeah. which are super cute. Like I just, I love it. So yeah, that's about what, what I make. Is there, is there a favorite that you just like love to make every time? These. Yeah. The, these are called the, so I have two styles of those there. This one's called the Anderson or no, sorry. This one's the N. Yeah. And then this one, I have another one with me right here. This one is called the Anderson's. So this one's just like a natural. And then you yeah. get to pick the color that you get on the bottom. Yeah. But these were one of my friends actually asked me if I could, if I thought I could make a plant hanger for her um, stepmom for her birthday. And I started my macrame journey the way that most macrame artists yeah. don't like most macrame artists start their journey with making plant hangers. But mine was like, I went all in and went for the large wall hangings, like from the get. Um, so I was kind of nervous to start plant hangers, but then I fell in love with them. And yeah, 
they're they're really cute and I love like a pop of fresh greenery like whether it's a plant or it's the like eucalyptus like I just love that and I would love to have that in like every room and yeah. these, these are so nice because they're like they can fit in that little tiny nook in your kitchen that you have like something that it's a piece of a wall yeah. that you want to put something there Absolutely. but you don't know what yeah yeah is there one that when you're create like, do you ever get in the groove and you're just like, so in the zone and you just keep going and pumping these things out? Yeah, I, I take, uh, so I still work. I was able to be rehired at the restaurant that I worked at here in Raleigh. Um, so I'm working a full-time job again and then also doing this. So I take some days off here and there and I'll just like set up my, I work off of a rolling rack and I just set it up and I just start pulling cords and cutting and I just go and go and go the ones that I find myself that I can do like I can pump out like 15 in a row are like these plant hangers but I've made one of my favorite pieces that I've made is for one of my best friends it goes above their bed it's like a macrame headboard and um, that's called the Rachel and that one is four feet wide and three feet long and like I what did I use I use 60 cords that are 13 feet long each and I have like over 800 knots that I have to do to like complete that wall hanging and I can get in the zone and just go 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 but my arms get tired at the end of that one so how long yeah. does that typically take you um so that one it probably takes me like 45 minutes just to cut cords okay. that is the worst part about macrame is like having to figure out how long the cords need to be so that you don't like if you if you don't get them long enough then they, you might have some that are like this long and some yeah. that are this long and then it some people like that look but I like have a little bit of OCD and I want it to yeah. all like oh, straight yeah. across so I always I tend to overcut my cords okay. but I I have found like some little things here and there that I can do with the shorter ones which is fun like trying to make sure that I I use every bit of product that I can instead of wasting it. Yeah. Um, so that one takes me about 45 minutes to cut the cords and then probably active knotting is something like four hours. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Do you just like put headphones in and music or do, like, do you do anything when you do it? I'm a Netflix and not okay. kind of person. So I, I'm addicted to like sitcoms. So I watched I mean, Netflix took my two favorites off, which are friends in the office. So I've like, I'd got some uh, suggestions from some of my followers on what to start yeah. next. Yeah. And I, uh, I didn't think about the fact that new girl has a ton of seasons. So I started watching new girl again. So that's, it's yeah. I used to, a lot of people, I used to do homework when I was in college and I would have Netflix on in the background. Everybody's like, you're not even watching the show. And I'm like, well, I kind of am, but like, yeah, like I can see it, but I'm still doing work while I'm doing it. So it's exactly on it. Yeah. No, I like, I like to be able to watch something and like, I like music too, but I and my husband is way better at like making a playlist and I have friends that are really good at making playlists so every once in a while I'll listen to some of their playlists but like if, if I turned on music it would just be like top 40 that yeah. I would listen to or like 90s hip-hop and R&B and it's like I need something that's like I'm not gonna want to dance and do yeah. like I need to focus yeah. on on that's the me, project that's... at hand that's exactly me. like if I turn music on I'm like I just want to get up and start dancing and then we completely yeah. just squash everything that we were going to do <laughs> exactly I mean it's good to get it out every once in a yeah. while you know but when I'm working I need to be yeah. watching something that I've watched a million times before so absolutely yeah so you you said you jumped both feet in first with macrame how did you find out about macrame like can you tell me a little bit about that because like this was something completely new for me. Yeah. So my mom really did a lot of it in the seventies yeah. and I was a girl scout from kindergarten until senior year of high school. So I learned like all of the basic macrame knots, like making hemp necklaces and like making friendship bracelets and stuff like that in girl scouts. And, um, my, I, I think I really like fell back in love with macrame when I saw on Pinterest when I was like looking for wedding ideas and there were some like really boho beautiful weddings and they had like the macrame backdrop and I was like oh this is so cool and my mom was like oh I've done that a million times and like you basically know how to do it too because you learned these knots when you made like friendship bracelets 
So we did the backdrop together um, in the summer of 2019. Very cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, where do you get your like inspiration from? Cause you do have a few different, like you said, the Rachel and the Anders, like, where do you get your inspiration from when you're creating? Like the names of my, well, my just items? your overall products and everything. Yeah. Well, so I, I get a lot of inspiration from my friends. Like they tell me the styles that they're looking for. So this all started because I was making things for my friends. Yeah. So everybody will send me like their inspiration photos yeah. and then I'll take my twist on it and like figure out how I want to do that. Um, I never thought like, I've always been a creative person, but I'm not very good at like fine arts. So okay. drawing has never been like a, a strong suit of mine. So I don't think that I could sit down and like, I know a lot of macrame artists that sit down and like draw something and they're like, this is what I'm going to make. Right. I can't do that. I have to be like standing there and be like, okay, how do I want this to look? My one friend, Rachel, the Rachel that I, the one that is called the Rachel has like, it's more geometric. Like it's got some triangles in it and, and stuff like that. Whereas like, then I took one that I made for my friend Siobhan and she's very like artistic and flowy. And, and so I, that's where I brought in like some merino wool roving and like did some weaving on that one and the tassels. So it just depends on like, I take a lot of my inspiration from the people that I'm making them for. And then, yeah. And then I'll take like, if I make something that's huge and I want to take it to a market, I can't really take something that's very big and has a right. big price tag to it on like to a market so then I'll try to figure out how I can make that in like a mini wall hanging yeah. or the plant hangers and I you know I really try to make stuff that I want to put in my house too you know like I feel like this is all parts of my style too yeah very cool I love that boho theme too but it's yeah. like that is such a common thing, but I didn't even think about it for, in terms of like doing it at weddings or things like that. Yeah. And pop to mind. Oh yeah. I've seen people who, so I haven't done these, but I know of artists that have done like macrame, um, like bouquet wraps. Yeah. And, um, I've seen like some behind like your chair, like the bride and groom chair, like having a little macrame hanging from there, but yeah. Very cool. cool. Um, but you said at the beginning, like the triangle pop-up, it's such like such a big account on Instagram just because yeah. it's such a big catalog of where they are and who is there and everything. What is it like being in this, I guess, small and local business community that, I mean, Raleigh has done such a really nice job of and in the triangle, like, what is it like being a part of that? It's amazing. It's, it's the best part of this. Like I, I started this to make things for my friends and like be there for them. And, and that way, you know, one day my best friends can tell their kids like, oh, your aunt Kat made that for you. You know, like that's what started it. But what's really kept it going is this community of artists that I've met through Triangle Pop-Up, like Triangle Pop-Up and Sarah Moody is, is who owns Triangle Pop-Up, owns yeah. and operates it. And she was able to like introduce me to all these amazing makers and artists like I have friends that make jewelry friends that make soap yeah. friends that make like cat pouncers and and I just and baby clothes and which is yeah. perfect because you know I'm gifting nursery things and then I can right. gift more baby things so right. it's just been the there's so many strong and empowered women in that group too which is so great and we just all like bounce ideas off of each other and collaborate and they're just all wonderful people. And they're so welcoming too. Like before I joined into this group, I was very intimidated by a lot of these women. Like, you know, they're, they're amazing and super cool. And like a lot of them have this really great like following on yeah. social media and it's like, you're intimidating, but then they're so nice and they're so down to earth and yeah. It's just been so great. That's awesome. And I think it's so like each pop-up market, I think is so cool and so different just because there's completely different people there. Yeah. But it's also like you were saying, like you can't put the whole big thing in the back of your car with a big price tag. So you have different things every time as well. So I yeah. think so like the authenticity is always there with each pop-up market. And I try to bring something new to each market. Like I know that that Triangle Pop-Up has a really large following. 
yeah. um, and people love to go to their markets and they are all over the place. Like they have some in Durham, you know, some downtown, they have some happening at the art museum this year. So there's like different areas of Raleigh and Raleigh's big enough that like I could meet new people at each place, but they do have a large following that like will go to multiple markets. So I want to bring something new to each market so that if you've seen me before, you're like, oh, but I haven't seen that. Like, yeah. those are really cool. So, you know, the, I want to, I want to build relationships with my customers and like, they don't have to have their entire house decked in macrame, <laughs> but like, I would like for them to find something that they like at my booth every time they come. Yeah. Keep them coming back with something new is kind of, yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I think it's, what I've found that's really cool is every time I follow someone new around here, like yourself, and there are a few others that I follow, like y'all are Instagram stories, talk to each other. And I'm like, okay, I recognize her. I recognize her, but it's, it's just so cool to see that community feel um, amongst it's, everybody. It's been so nice, especially with the pandemic, like building that community of people, because I worked in restaurants pre and now I still work in restaurants but like it's it's very different the restaurant that I work in is is just doing curbside takeout so there's no interaction with people and and like I really crave that I I'm an extrovert I am an Enneagram two wing three like I need people and I wasn't really getting to have my people in the same aspect that I was pre-pandemic and then with markets and then these these women that I've met and like now I do workshops too and like I get to meet other people there and like teach them how to make macrame it's just been it's been so nice like I, I have my core group of like my best friends my till till yeah. death friends but like it's been so nice to introduce these new people into my life absolutely in my 30s you know like I I, I thought you I always thought when you got to that be that age it was like you were stuck with the friends that you had no yeah. offense to any of my friends that I have and I love but we'll see this. <laughs> I love that. And for you bringing up your workshops, you did just have a workshop last week. How did you get around the idea of doing workshops and starting doing that? I was really nervous about it, to be honest. Like okay. I, I'm very extroverted and I can talk to just about anybody, but like being at the front and having to teach someone how to do this was like very nerve wracking to me at first. Um, but I connected with um, this woman, Lauren of Joyworthy Company, who she hosts workshops and stuff like that. She reached out to me and was like, would you be interested in doing a workshop? And at first I was like, no, that's <laughs> terrifying. But then she was like, no, like, you're going to be so good at it. Like you're, it's great. And people love it. They want to, they want to learn from you. And that was something like that was imposter syndrome, like right. huge because I was like, who wants to take a macrame class from me? Like what? No way. And she was like, no, people do want to like give yourself some credit. And I was like, okay, fine. So my first class, one of my maker friends, um, Stephanie of Coco Body Co took my class, which was like huge for me because it was a friendly face that was there and it made me really comfortable. And I also taught the class to my four best friends before I actually taught the class so that I could like feel comfortable yeah. in teaching someone else how to do it. Um, but it's, it's a really cool way to connect and like we take two hours um, and I teach something that, that doesn't take me two hours to make, but like going around and, and I help them with each kind of knot and make sure that they're getting it correctly and like they're pulling the knots tight enough. And it also allows for time for us to like chat and right. like have a glass of wine, maybe yeah. have some charcuterie, like whatever. Um, just a, a way for people to like get together during the, when you're not necessarily doing all the things you were Absolutely. before the pandemic, like it's still a way to like socialize and get to make something cool yeah. while you're there. Absolutely. I think those workshops are so cool just because of the fact that you are learning something new, but like you said, you can have some champagne. It could be a brunch, like a midday mimosas kind of situation. If yeah. One way to do it. I, I think they're so cool and they're, uh, they're personal, which I really like as well. Yeah. I'm teaching another one on um, March 20th on a rooftop downtown and it'll be from like five to seven. So the sunset will be happening at the end and it'll be super cute. And I'm excited about this one because it's going to be outdoors. So I can have even more people come take the workshop. Yeah, so absolutely. it'll be, 
Yeah. That'll be a ton of fun. I'll have to come. I might have to sign up and see if I can come to that one. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. I provide, so you learn how to make a plant hanger like one of these. And, um, I provide a potted plant, um, with it as well. And this, this go around. So I learned at my last one that I made or the last one we did that not everyone that took the class was like, Oh, I don't know which plant to take. Cause like, I can't keep a plant alive. So I'm going to bring some mason jars okay. with like fresh flowers in it so that those people feel confident in what they're taking home too. Very nice. I, yeah. I appreciate that because I'm also one of those people where I'm like, I might be able to keep a plant alive, but I'm not quite positive. Well, I always, I do try to provide plants that are like unkillable. Like there are a couple plants that like you can water them once every two weeks and like they can get a little bit of sun and they're cool yeah. you know it's not like I'm not giving you one that you have to like <laughs> test the soil and stuff like that you know because like I like plants but I'm not that like I don't have that <laughs> much of a green thumb so yeah. Very cool. um and, you know you did just start this in the beginning of the pandemic but as a, like a small and local business owner do you have a piece of advice that you would give somebody that is wanting to start their own business, whether it's through Instagram or, you know, a small little storefront? Just to do it. Like, don't be scared. I spent a lot of time thinking that I, that nobody would want, like only my friends would want what I was making and they only wanted it and they were being nice because I'm one of their friends. But like, <laughs> it's not true. Like if you have something to offer, there's always people out there that, are going to find you right. and to build like the with the with social media what's been so great is is there's so many makers that like I said I was super intimidated by them but then interacting with them in their stories and just becoming like I have friends from this like from social media that have now because we're doing markets and stuff like we're able to see each other and like actually be friends in real life too but like I've made connections with other macrame artists in like California and like one that's in Outer Banks and and so you can always like one of the classes that I taught there was a girl in there that was really interested in learning how to macrame and and she like slid into my dms and we were chatting and she was like well I'm gonna come take your class and I was like cool that's awesome like I can't wait yeah. and afterwards like she and I have had like a really good back and forth like she wanted to continue to make macrame. So she asked me about like what kind of cords to buy and what I suggested for that kind of stuff. And, and like, what are some tips and tricks to like make your life easier when you're doing macrame? And like so many makers out there are willing to help you like on your journey. Cause all of us started small right. and like we had other people that like helped us figure yeah. out where to go in what direction like be true to who you are as an artist yeah but also like there's these other people that can help you guide you in like what kind of materials that you need I mean I found this girl that does like the hardest part of me of all of this for me is the yeah. um legality part of it yeah. the like sales tax and like being a business like I'm a creative person like that yeah. stuff is not I get anxiety thinking about <laughs> all of that um, but I found someone that that does that and like is a consultant and can like help me help any of you so there's always somebody out there and there's so many resources online now to like help you figure out how to do this okay but yeah taking the time and and just not being afraid to take the jump yeah yeah, I love that. I actually just told somebody today, um, they asked me what my my phrase is for now that I'm 24. And I said, my phrase for my 24th year is just do the dang thing. Yes, um, so that just is, do it. I, I love that you said that. And I literally just said it like an hour ago. And I'm like, there's a theme here and I'm loving it today. Yes, um, it's true. Like you have to do the one really nice thing about the pandemic that came from the pandemic was that I like was forced to do something that like I'm a workhorse like before all of this like I just worked six days a week yeah eight to ten hours a day and just like went to work and would never have been like had any time to do this or I would have thought that I had no time to do this but you make time for the things that like bring you joy and like making macrame and like meeting new people like that brings me joy so I, I make time for it I love it 
Now for yourself, like, is there, do you have like a vision in your head? Is there a dream goal? Do you want to like continue to do pop-up markets in your own workshops? You have your Etsy shop, but like, is there a thought in your head? Like maybe one day I could open up my own store or like, is that a thought in your head? Uh, that would be so cool. Um, right now I'm really trying to focus on getting myself into more, um, stores or across <laughs> the Carolinas yeah. and like I'm originally from Virginia so if I could find some cute little stores there that want to carry my stuff that would be awesome yeah. um, and then I'm really I really was scared to do the workshops but I'm really starting to love them and like I'm finding more people that I can partner with to do workshops and it would be really great if one day I could just like do it on my own and yeah. like have a space where it's like this is where I host a workshop every yeah. second Saturday or something you know right. um, but there's so there's a district in Wilmington called the Cargo District yep. and there's something very similar coming to Durham called Boxyard yeah and it's like where people have they have their stores out of shipping containers yeah which to me like owning a store seems a little daunting like right. an, a huge store kind of thing like that scares the bejesus out of me <laughs> but like I feel like I could get behind a cargo container and like you know, I could separate it and have half of it be my retail space and the other half could be my workshop spot. And like, then I could bring other makers in that want to host workshops. So that's like a little bit down the road. Um, but I've, I've heard a lot about these, these shipment, uh, containers. So I'm really, really excited to see how it turns out and who ends up. Cause I mean, it is like, so it would be such a cool like breeding ground for so many small and local business owners just to kind of move into this whole area and just start opening up this whole like community a hundred percent and there's like so in Wilmington there was this girl her name's Sarah and she owned a shipping container store called the plant outpost and she got so popular that like she just recently moved into like a store store so it's like it's really nice like you can be happy and content in your container, like your shipping container and, and do what you want and feel you can do in there. But there's also like still so much room for growth too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, at the same time you could sell, but also do your workshops in that shipping container. So I think that'd be so stinking cool to be able to. Right. Do. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Um, Thank you. For you, what is like, what is upcoming? What are the events that people should know about that you're doing um, and kind of the best way to keep up with you? Um, I have that rooftop workshop on March 20th. Yeah. That's with Joyworthy Company. So you can find the tickets for that through Eventbrite, either through okay. my Instagram or her Instagram. Um, those are from, it's from five to seven. You make a plant hanger and you get to take home a potted plant with you too. Nice. And then um, I have, I'm going to be in Smithfield on the 21st of this month okay. for a little pop-up market at Double Barley Brewing. And then in April, I have a bunch of things happening then too, but I still have to, there's a couple of things I have to verify, but you can shop my items on Etsy. Um, my, I have items in Triangle Pop-Up Store on 15 okay. West Target Street. Yeah. Um, I'm in Adventures in Bloom, which is in Cary. I am in the Bayleaf Market, which is in North Raleigh, Homebodies, yep. which is in Wake Forest. And I'm getting ready to be in a store in Franklinton, which is um, going to open on April 3rd called Mercantile. Um, and I'm super excited about that. And then I'm in a store in Wilmington too, Augie and Zoe, which is in a shipping container in the cargo district. I know Augie and Zoe. I love her and I love her stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in Wilmington, so I'm very like- Really? Yes. Yeah. I grew up a lot in Wilmington. Um, oh, did you ever eat at the Copper Penny? Yeah. I, <laughs> I worked there for eight years. That's where I worked for like the whole time I lived in Wilmington. Very cool. Yeah. We, <laughs> we would spend almost every single summer just there. Uh, nice. So it was such a cool place to grow up <laughs> and yeah. be familiar with. So Absolutely. I, yeah. Um, the last question I always end this with and ask everybody is just what inspires you? Oh, what inspires me? The people that I love inspire me. I mean, my grandmothers, what I named my business after, I'm so lucky to still have both of them in my life. They're 91 and 93. And 
they like I grew up going to their houses over the summer and and we always did so many different arts and crafts so like knowing that I'm continuing on this like artsy side of me and and I send them little things here and there that I make and they always call me and tell me how beautiful they are and how they're so proud of me and so excited and I mean just all my friends and my family and my husband they all inspire me that's so fantastic it's so important to have such a strong backing behind you um I mean clearly you do but I think that's that's so important for everybody to have especially in business yes (laughs) have your crew that's there to help you like yeah well even you said you practice with four of your best friends like I was thinking I was like that is the that is so smart it was so great it helped me work out the nerves and it helped me like work out the kinks of how to explain things like they were they were so wonderful and then they all got to keep their macrame piece so they were they were totally fine with doing that for me (laughs) that's awesome that is so awesome um I'm gonna have Kat's Etsy shop linked down below along with um her Eventbrite and all her stuff coming up as well as her Instagram so you guys can go follow her um but Kat thank you so much for being here I truly appreciate it um, and I can't wait to see, you know, if you end up in Durham in those shipping containers, cause that'll be yes. so cool. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This was great. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I will, um, have everything for her linked down below, but I will see you guys back here next time. Bye y'all.